There are great cruise deals advertised all over the internet, even in your mail sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with getting a good deal, but there are some warning signs that a cruise deal is too good to be true. And at the end of the day, you don't want to obviously waste your money or even get scammed for that matter. Sometimes when you see really low prices, it looks really good on the surface, but in reality it could be a problem. It could be a scam, or it could simply be setting you up for disappointment. In either case, you're going to be upset and wish you could do it over again. So today I want to share four warning signs that that cruise deal you see is too good to be true. Number one, and this is probably the most important one in the entire video, those free cruise offer mailers. The saying nothing is free in this world holds true with cruise bookings as well. Obviously, if you earned a free cruise through the casino, or maybe you reached pinnacle club status with Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society, then you are indeed getting what you agreed to. What I'm talking about though, are the offers for a free cruise in exchange for something like attending a seminar or signing up for a vacation club. They usually come with a free cruise postcard in the mail. It's addressed anonymously with no return address, and of course, it's completely unsolicited. These are notorious for high sales pressure opportunities to lure you in with the promise of a quote unquote free cruise to get you to buy a timeshare or some other investment. Suffice to say, these are really bad ideas because the issues associated with false pretenses and getting sucked into a major cost. There are so many stories of victims who sought a free cruise but ended up with timeshares and travel clubs that they never wanted. The other free cruise we see offered a lot are giveaways, either online or in the mail. While Royal Caribbean does sometimes offer a free cruise giveaway, they're pretty limited, and it's more likely what you're seeing is a scam. This is especially true on Facebook, where you see a post advertising, if you like a post or join a group, you'll be eligible for a free cruise. And then there's the old school free cruise giveaway. You might have seen like at a pizza parlor or some other restaurant near you, where you fill out a card, drop it in a box for your chance to win. Not only are you not winning a free cruise, you're signing yourself up for a lifetime of spam calls. If you see an offer for a free cruise, you should be extremely skeptical. My advice is completely ignore it. But if you wish to learn more, be sure to ask questions and search the internet for more information about the company or opportunity so you can determine if it's a scam. Never, ever, ever attend a timeshare presentation or travel club in the hopes of receiving a free cruise gift. Now let's move from scam to potentially a bad idea because I've had so many friends who reach out to me and tell me they found a great price on a Royal Caribbean cruise for the family and it's largely because they booked an old small ship. Now to be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Royal Caribbean's older ships. They offer classic cruise vacations and plenty of people enjoy them, but they might be the wrong cruise vacation for you. While it's true that some of the lowest cruise prices are found on Vision or Radiance class cruise ships, you should be very aware of what you're getting with one of these ships and more importantly, what you're not getting. Older ships lack the bells and whistles that you find on Royal Caribbean's newer ships. If you've seen a Royal Caribbean television commercial lately, pretty much all the fun things you see there are not on any of these ships. This is primarily a problem for families who really are expecting water slides with lots of top deck activities to keep their kids and even the parents occupied. No matter which Royal Caribbean cruise ship you pick, be sure to look up what features and amenities it has so you're clear on what you can expect on board. Not all Royal Caribbean ships have a Broadway show, water slides, laser tag, or bumper cars. So if there's a particular activity you absolutely want on the ship, double check the ship has it before you book. Definitely do not book a cruise purely based on price. Another offer that might seem too good to be true are those cruise ship cabin upgrades. Royal Caribbean offers passengers the opportunity to bid for a stateroom upgrade with the promise you could pay significantly less to move up to a larger cabin. When you look at the prices to bid, it can be really tempting to roll the dice on upgrading your cabin, but before you do, you'll want to keep a few things in mind. When you bid for an upgrade, you're basically telling the cruise line, if there's an unsold cabin that's left over, you'll take it for a certain price. Just because you place a bid doesn't mean there's actually a cabin upgrade too. Royal Caribbean will use the bidding opportunity as kind of a backup system primarily. So maybe somebody cancels at the last minute or indeed there are unsold cabins, they can fall back on these bids rather than leaving the rooms unsold. More importantly, when you place a bid, you're giving up a few things with that upgrade that you might not like later on. First, you can't pick your cabin location if your bid is selected. That means you might end up with a cabin all the way forward, which could be a problem if you're more susceptible to motion sickness, or your room might be under a public venue that is really noisy. If you're traveling with friends or family and want to be near each other, there's no way to do Royal Up and remain near them. Another reason to think twice about bidding for that cabin upgrade 
is going to cost you, well, more money. And that's additional money from what you originally booked. If your vacation budget is tight, then maybe skip that upgrade and save the money for shore excursions, restaurants, or even drinks on board. And finally, there's just the general caveat of any really low advertised cruise fare. When you start price shopping for a cruise, it's really easy to find a great rate advertised, but keep in mind there are a lot of extra costs that you can expect later on. Travel websites selling cruises usually advertise the base fare, which sounds like a great price. The problem is this is far from out the door price. Many times these prices will emit taxes, port fees, and travel insurance. And when you actually get to the point of booking the cruise, you're gonna notice that final price has gone up much more than you first saw. As an example, when we booked a $99 cruise fare for one of our staff members, while each person did actually pay $99 for the base fare, the total cost was $486.50 for two people or $234.25 per person. Now, the good news is this practice might be going away a little bit. Royal Caribbean and other cruise lines recently made a change as of July 1st to include port fees and taxes in their advertised prices. But that doesn't mean that third-party websites will do the same. And it also doesn't account for things like, again, shore excursions and drink packages and dining packages, travel insurance, and other add-ons that are definitely extra, but inevitably I think you're gonna end up booking one or the other. If you wanna make sure that you're actually getting a really good deal on your cruise, there's a couple things I'd recommend doing. Number one, start tracking your prices now to get a baseline. Assuming you know nothing about cruises at all, you're gonna to wanna to start off by simply tracking prices for cruises that you're interested in and then seeing how they shift over time. Cruise prices are specific to the ship and sailing, and it's priced a lot more like airfare than say a pair of jeans. The specific sailing on a certain date and vessel could have drastically different prices than the sailing immediately following it or preceding it. If you're more than a year out before you'd like to cruise, I'd recommend tracking the price of the cruise for the specific stateroom that you want on a spreadsheet or notepad or wherever you want to jot down a note on a daily or even weekly basis. You'll probably see the most price swings when a new month rolls around, but I've seen prices change daily. Once you start getting an idea of how much the cruise fare is going to cost, you can start evaluating new offers to determine if it's really going to make a difference in the price. However, don't wait too long to pull the trigger on booking a cruise because just like airfare, as more people book up cabins, prices tend to go up. You should also leverage a good travel agent to help you out because they track a lot of prices for clients on a daily basis. So they have a really good idea of what constitutes a good price for popular settings like spring break or even Christmas. Something else you're going to want to do is obviously define for yourself what a good deal means. Everyone has their own sense of what a good deal is. So don't get too wrapped up in what others think. Ultimately, you need to feel good about the price that you're getting. Your budget for your vacation will be different than somebody else's. And maybe you're looking to get the best price on a suite, whereas others want an inside cabin. As an example, I spent $7,000 on a suite on Allure this East because it was a good deal for that type of high-end suite. But there were a lot of people who thought I was absolutely crazy to spend that much money on any cruise ship cabin. So look at the variety of cabin choices across different ships. Start to get an idea of the ballpark you're considering for the cruise cost. Pretty soon, I think you'll come up with a number that you're seeing and a number you'd like to be at before you book. So determine your personal priorities and start looking for the right price with that context. And then, of course, getting a good deal on a cruise may also just differ on a few variables that are specific to your situation. As an example, let's talk seasonality, because there's going to be a major difference in the price of a cruise, as well as the discounts offered, from one week to the next. High demand weeks will see far less deals than other weeks of the year. In addition, whether school is in session or not can play a big part in the total price. You might see discounts offered on a cruise in September because, well, it's hurricane season in the Caribbean and shoulder season of Alaska and European cruises. These bonus sales will absolutely save a lot of money, but you got to be aware of the trade-off. Like you might not be able to get time off of work or get your kids out of school. Then, of course, there's how close to your sale date you are. You might find a really good deal on a cruise more than 12 months in advance because Royal Caribbean wants to sell more rooms up front. Similarly, there could be a good last-minute deal on a cruise sailing in like six weeks from now because of leftover unsold cabins. There's another reason why Royal Caribbean might want to offer a better deal on one cruise over another, and it's usually due to how many cabins they've been able to sell so far and what their internal forecasts predict going forward. So my best advice is really focus on the final price, not the promotion, because Royal Caribbean rolls out sales every day, and it just seems like there's always a certain percentage off or some of their deal being offered there. So skip over the name of the sale and whatever you're seeing in the marketing emails, because it's all window dressing. What you really want to do is look at that bottom line final price. And while you're trying to find that bottom line price you can live with, avoid the temptation of cruise deals that are similarly too good to be true because they truly are and you don't want to be disappointed or out of a lot of money later on. 
Let me know in the comments below, what's your best advice for getting a good deal on a cruise and what are some of the warning signs that you look for before booking any sailing? Please also like our video, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.